territory it's not a state but it's u.s territory right so if you're a US citizen you just need whatever id you need to get into the airport exactly you don't need your passport just your government issued IEP. but you can still bring your passport Absolutely. a lot you of state you know you can just use that to get in instead of a driver's license so there are three virgin islands okay uh three u.s virgin islands there's saint thomas which is we kind of consider that the party island also the luxury island yeah it's like jamaica kind of vibe uh and then you got saint john now that is a uh, nature reserve right there's not much at San John yeah it, it's beautiful you can go Gorgeous. there you can look around but it's not really a resort place right. it's a nature preserve and then you have St. Croix which is more of a relaxation island it's a resort island it's smaller less populated a little quieter right but it's still just as desirable and for us we really wanted a, a, vacation. a vacation not a we trip we just gotten married and right. wanted to relax it was our honeymoon so we wanted to go to st croix so those are the three st thomas party island st john nature and st croix the relaxation you can get to all of these relatively easily once you're there getting there however getting there is not quite so easy for us we live in missouri and it took three connecting flights to get us there mm -hmm. we flew from missouri to chicago chicago to miami and finally from Miami to St. Croix. So if you're near Miami or in Miami or you can get anywhere near there relatively easy, it should be easier for you. Otherwise, you're going to have to make some connecting flights. Right. So on this special occasion, it's our honeymoon after all, we decided to go to a not terribly cheap resort. Now, most of the time in this show, we're going to talk to you about hostels and airbnbs and local bed and breakfast and these very relatively quaint, yeah, quaint affordable and fun and neat we kind of we kind of went okay boomer on this one <laughs> we did but it was our honeymoon we wanted to indulge right so we went to what i consider the best resort on the entire island we did a lot of research and we found the buccaneer was the place that we really wanted to go it's this it's in this old cove, this 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 uh, bay. It's got its own little private bay. Oldest, um, oldest continuing operating hotel on the right. island, and it's fantastic. Lovely, when you, beautiful. When you first get there, they have the the resort itself. It has this big open air restaurant. Where just, we ate breakfast and dinner. Right, you, you you want to eat breakfast and dinner. Oh, it's there. fabulous. It, it's just fantastic. It's it's expensive though. It is not. Cheap. It, it is not cheap. So what was We're really definitely an indulgence. right? Definitely an indulgence. So what was really nice is I called ahead and I said, "Hey, it's our honeymoon. Uh, can you do something special for us?" They, and I they think did. They gave us a little bit of an upgrade on the rooms. We got a little bit nicer one. We, we got, got a honeymoon suite. Yeah, well, not the. Well, yeah, I guess yes, you could call they gave it. Us we got suite. <laughs> suite. It was really nice. It had a little balcony, and we could look out on the water. And there's, they've got two of their own beaches, mm -hmm. really three, but one of them is kind of off the property. But right. we were near the second smaller beach. This one walked directly out onto the small beach. Oh, it was great. And they had a nice bottle of Spanish bubbly waiting for they us did. in the room for Chilled us. Chilled so on ice. Okay, very... No, congratulations on your wedding. Yeah, they, 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 they treated us well there. They very, very much did. Now, on our first full day in, in St. Croix, we went into Christiansted, a little little town on the island. There's two big towns on the island, Christiansted and Frederiksted. Right. We did Christiansted. Now, this is an old Danish fort from back when, you know, the Danes um, colonized the island. Yeah, they, they were the first Europeans to come, and uh, the Danish had it, and I think the, the French, the Spanish, the, the Americans. Basically, it, everyone. It changed it hands a lot, point. but a, there's a lot of Danish influence on the island which is why it's called saint croix instead of not saint cruz right. or saint cross and saint yes. croix stands for saint cross so right. saint croix instead of saint you know whatever because of the danes exactly now in christianstead there are these lovely dockside shops and there's this fort which you can tour there was a brewery which it was a small brewery. It was a Caribbean brewery. Little brew pub place, but it was right on the docks. It was Nothing just to write home about in terms of beer, but in terms of experience, absolutely check this place out. Right. So on our second day, we went to uh, a tour of the island. You get in these 15-passenger vans. By the way, the taxis on the entire island, there's not a single real 
taxi. Those little yellow cats are all giant 15 passenger 15 buses. Passenger, I don't know what rule or law that they passed that said we have to have 15 passenger Or it's just buses. a matter of convenience due to like cruise ships and tour groups. Seems wasteful to me, but every single taxi is a 15 passenger It is what van. it is. So we got on one of these that uh, had booked a tour where they travel around the island. You get to see some of the, the nature of it. That was great and all, but the best part was we went to the top of a mountain, the highest point in, in St. Croix, and there is the Crusian Rum Distillery, where we got these t-shirts. And our lovely rum here. It's a great facility, and we got to see some really interesting, uh, not only how they make the rum, but I didn't know this, the, they, the rum barrels, a really interesting process. So rum barrels start with wood from Missouri. They do. The Independent Stave Company. Out they of make, Lebanon. Out of Lebanon, Missouri. They make all, because in order to make bourbon, you have to have a brand new barrel. Mm -hmm. So they sell these barrels to bourbon companies. And in order to make scotch whiskey, you have to use a used barrel. Once used barrel. Once used. So oftentimes they're going to be sold overseas to the various uh, Irish whiskey or scotch whiskey or whatever European whiskeys they're going to make. Now rum uses... Old barrels. Old barrels. They don't really have a specific they age. They don't get used to them, but... They right. Are old. Once a rum, once a barrel has been used for at least two different liquors, it's going to wind up as a rum barrel. So they ship this all the way across the world, and here's this rum barrel uh, from wood from Missouri that went overseas, came back, and they're going to make rum out of it. So and after the rum is is out of the barrel, that barrel is basically well done. Yeah, yeah. That that is the life end of the lifespan of that barrel. Right. So it's really interesting to see how Crucian creates the rum. You know, they take the sugar cane, the the sugar. Uh, mix it all up and, 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 and ferment it and then d distill it and then age it in these really cool barrels. And then the wonderful thing is their flavored rums are not artificial flavors. They took their basic um, white rum, light rum, and they put real fruit in it. And so it's basically infused rum. So when this is pineapple rum, this at one point had chunks of pineapple in it. Very good. But w the part of it that I loved is it's right on top of a mountain. Oh, it's, and it's a beautiful just really views. worth going for. The one thing that was a bit weird is they don't actually sell you any of the rum that they make there. So it's it's a bit weird because the company is owned by Jim Beam. Mm -hmm. Jim Beam that makes all the bourbon. That's just why they share all their barrels. So they actually make the rum in giant containers, ship it to the United States where it's bottled, and then they ship bottles back. So the only weird thing is every, every, Crucian is everywhere on St. Croix, but none of it's bottled on St. Croix. Yeah. It's a bit of an odd supply chain, but, but I guess it works. U.S. territory, it's... It's more economical to do it that Yeah, way. doing things in large volumes, right. shipping it back and forth. Right. Now, that's the distillery. After that, we did a snorkeling tour. Now, we went to Buck Island. You can book these tours through your hotel. I believe that's what we did, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you can book it through the resort, yeah. Now, you had a couple options. Option one, you could do a big boat with a big group. It's and a big would, catamaran. And they would take you to an island. They'd grill you cheeseburgers. You'd hang out on the beach. Or you can do a smaller tour, fewer people, smaller boat, and they'll just feed you sandwiches. That's what we did, because we want to spend more time on the island. Yeah, snorkeling is more important than a beachside uh, burger, which you can get a beachside burger at back at the resort. We had that. Right, so so we went to Buck Island, we snorkeled, we got to see all these uh, different... Parrotfish and sea turtles. Coral, I think coral. you cut your leg on coral. I did a person on our tour did. Ah, a person on the tour. Yeah, so it kind of ruined... Ever after that, we watched Mo uh, Moana. And we can't watch Moana because Jessica's looking at it and she she'd says, be she'd be dead, all that coral, she screwed up her leg. The guy touched the coral and when we were he snorkeling. Blood gushing down his leg. So she should be dead. She, she just got just cheese grated along that, along that coral. <laughs> we are not affiliated with Disney. We do not own it. <laughs> Moana. Please don't sue us, Disney. Uh, it's a cartoon. It's not, it's about magical water. I don't think realism is what they were going for. But uh, we, yeah, coral is sharp, FYI. But one of the things is, we, we spent these excursions, but like we said, St. Croix is not a place where you go to have a trip to see things. It is a vacation This is a very different experience than our usual trips. So one of our favorite things to do was to just actually stay at the resort. Lay on the beach with a rum drink in the hand. A nice fantasy book of some kind, uh, just reading, drinking rum drinks, and they had this beachside restaurant. So they had the, the restaurant up at the resort where you can look around. It's gorgeous views. But then they had this little small sort of shack cafe place where you can where get your, cheeseburger, you get your nice. cheeseburger and your mixed rum drinks. But we're out there swimming in the in the little beach that they had. We see this boat come up. Crystal turquoise water, oh, by the way. Oh, beautiful water. So this, this speedboat comes up and this guy comes out. He's got a big net 
and I don't know what's in it, but he's got a net of something. We can something. see this net moving. Whatever There's is in there is a lot. Something in there. He walks to the restaurant, and he leaves with an envelope. And I'm like, he sold them something. He did. He sold... Uh, so I run over to the restaurant, and I say, what did he sell you, and how can I eat it? And the guy just laughs, and he says, we're having a big lobster cookout tonight. Caribbean lobster is Fabulous. Caribbean lobster is different than New England lobster. There's because no claws. No claws. But there's antennas. Big antennas, and that's you know. That's the, where the good meat. Right, is. just like a Maine lobster, the good meat's in the claw. The Caribbean lobster, good meat's right in the tentacles. So they cut these things in half. Grill them they over. With slap butter. them over on a grill. Just butter them up, and oh, it was great. Oh, best lobster. Expensive. <laughs> Expensive. It wasn't cheap. Worth every penny. But we got to see these lobsters. Fresh caught, alive. We saw the fishing boat where they were caught. They came in, and we're like, we're going to eat that. So we Six got Six hours later is on our plate. Very much reassured that these things were fresh. Yes. You can't really get that a lot of places. No, you can't. Now, this particular trip, the reason, one of the reasons we wanted to highlight this is it actually is the origin of the name of the show, Passports and Birth Control. For those of you wondering why we call the show Passports and Birth Control, it's because of our honeymoon. See, we were on the flight from Missouri to Chicago, and I realized it's our honeymoon, and I left my birth control at home. Yeah, so it's not something you want to hear on no. your honeymoon as it's progressing. No. So we land in Chicago. He calls his mom. I say, break into our house. <laughs> Find the prescription. I say, you can get that filled early, right? Because right. we're not going to FedEx. It's not going to meet us there. It's no. not going to get us there in time. We're going to miss a pill. You don't want to miss a pill no. on your birth control. Especially on your honeymoon. Right. So we, we, we get the prescription number. And his mother says, I hope you know you are costing me a grandchild. <laughs> so I, we call up. There are, is a Walgreens. Very near the airport in Miami. We have a three-hour layover in Miami. I could have never been happier that we had a long layover. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we call up the Walgreens and we say, here's the number, can we get this early? And they say, no problem. We land in Miami. We, we're, tra we're flying carry-on only, so we don't need to worry about check bags. We book it to the taxi stand, get in a cab. And I, I say, I'm so happy I get to say, keep the meter running. I've never been able to say, keep the meter running. Unfortunately, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he said, oh, you want to just go there and back? I told him the story. He said, I'll do the whole thing for $50. Right. Which probably saved us money, but I didn't get a chance to say, keep the meter running. <laughs> so we get my birth control. We get back to the airport. We make it in plenty of time that we're able to hit the airport bar and have a beer before getting on our flight from Miami. We, to we, we made it in and out with an hour of despair. And so we, we got the birth control. We got in. No honeymoon problem. Honeymoon saved. Yeah. No honeymoon baby. Major, yeah, major stress, but we got it resolved because we had our head on and we figured out a solution to the problem. Right. And, and it kind of made us remember that experience when we went to uh, Europe. to Europe. We, we spent a, a, an entire summer backpacking through Europe. Which we'll be going into detail on that later. Part of the reason that we, we wanted to do this series was to highlight our experiences there. And, and to we, make it possible for others to follow what we did. You can do this. It's very easy. But what we g always got stressed out about, did I forget my socks? Did, did I forget I, my phone charge? Did I, did I, oh my gosh, is my belt. You know, little things. Like but, that. here's the thing. As long as you have those things that you cannot replace... You're golden. Yeah. So we found that all you need, the only things you can't replace are passports and birth control. Yeah, because if you find yourself where your entire belongings are gone, you can still enjoy your trip, replace everything, figure out the thing that you can't not be without, you can't lose, is your passport and your birth control. So it was sort of a mantra of don't worry. As long as we have these things, we're good. We can continue on. And so every trip we take, before we head out the door, Got your passports and birth control? Passports and birth control. Right. We would Actually, we would just say that. Like At first, we would say, do you got your passport? Yes. Do you got your birth control? Yes. And then it just became a statement with a question mark. I'd say, passports and birth control? Passports and birth control. So every time we left the house or every time we left a hostel, every time we left a hotel, we'd look at each other and we'd say this, and it became this mantra of be at peace, be excited. We have this. Everything is under control. And exactly. so whenever we... We leave, we always say that question. And so we decided to call our show that. And so we're reminding you, as long as you have your passport, and as long as you have your birth control. You're set to go. Yeah. So this has been Passports and Birth Control. Don't forget your passport. Don't forget your birth control. Hi, right, guys. We're going to do a quintessential Caribbean beach drink, a basic rum punch. Now, I'm going to be highlighting the Crucian Pineapple Rum here because their pineapple rum, their flavored rums are so good. So you're going to start with just a glass of ice. 
Now usually I'll, I'm all about the fancy drinkware, but this is a dr uh, beach drink, so you want a beach glass. I'm using my Papa No Joe's glass. I'm going to fill that with some ice. Now you're going to start with four ounces of orange juice. This is an ounce and a half jigger. So we're going to just use three of these and call it close enough. Now we're going to do the same amount, about four ounces of mango juice. Usually I use pineapple juice in this, but we are doing pineapple rum instead. And so we're using mango juice to heighten the tropical flavor a little bit. If you want to use pineapple juice and just regular light rum, that's more traditional. Now we're going to do an ounce and a half of each rum. This is Crucian's pineapple rum. Like I said, this is flavored with real pineapple fruit. It is not artificial flavors. It is not chemicals. It is just pineapple and rum. Now we're going to do an ounce and a half of their dark rum. So this is a pretty boozy drink, but it's quite worth it. Now we need half an ounce of lime juice. Normally I would go for fresh squeezed, but we're just going to do standard. So there is the lime juice. And we're going to finish it with just a dollop of grenadine for color, because it's already a very sweet drink. So just a dollop. Now, there is your rum punch. We're going to garnish that with a cherry. And there's your rum punch. Salute. Like Fast Sports and Birth Control? Give us a review and follow us on Instagram.